Hello, another video here. I think this is video number four. Right now we have 25, yeah right, 25 hours of exposure. Now there's two ways of doing this. There is seed only exposure. These seeds were exposed for four hours. The green was exposed to four hours of south pole centrifugal uh, magnetism and the red uh, marked jar was exposed to north pole centrifugal magnetism for four hours also. You get more drastic results by roughly 25% or so if you're doing exposure constantly during growth. However, you do need large honking magnets like the 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch neodymium iron boron in 50 gauss magnets. Okay, Those are typically like 40 bucks. Now, even after only, now these are seed only exposures, right? Do not have magnets uh, under, under them currently as they're germinating. Done this experiment countless times. It's always replicatable by anybody. Now you do need a larger magnet. You do need a more powerful magnet. You can't be using fridge magnets or hard drive magnets, okay? Um, even a little one inch cube magnet, which you can't see it, but it's way back there, like it's a one inch by one inch cube magnet. I think they're like $22. You can use those. But I have to show you the special way to tape the seeds on there because a magnet is dissectable. It's field dynamics as far as uh, uh, magnetodielectric phase shift. It's either rarefaction on the North Pole, which causes stunted growth, and uh, magnetodielectric uh, compression. You could basically think of uh, expansion or dilation in growth. It affects uh, animals, insects, embryos, hatching eggs. Um, actually, a north pole of a magnet to the centrifugal edge will actually slow cancer growth. This isn't my opinion or belief. This is hardcore fact. As I told you, those two books were uh, written by Rawls and Davis. Those were suppressed works. Now, there's some used copies out there, but you know, basically 30, 40 years of their work is suppressed. Now, they had no idea what magnetism was or how it worked. Um, they had no idea what the phase shift was. They had no idea about any of that stuff. They just knew that when they did this and they did that, you got these fantastic results. But uh, I've discovered why it works, how it works, what it is, so on and so forth. I've actually gotten underneath the hood of magnetism and magnets. So now, let's not keep you waiting. Let's look at 25 hours of growth. You actually soak the seeds for eight hours the first time. You pour them out, you wash them, and then uh, three or four times a day you actually wash them and swirl them a bit and you drain out the water. So, always turns out the same. Let's take a look at the North Pole exposed seeds. There's some water dripping on the table here. I don't know if you can see this, but we have almost no seeds sprouting. Um, if I were to actually uh, give it an estimate, I would say it is less than 5%. You should probably be able to see it there in the jar. You'd be looking for the break in the, uh, the shell of, uh, these, uh, of these sprout seeds. And it is definitely less than 5%. Now this is a magnetodielectric rarefaction, stunted growth from divergent centrifugal magnetism along the outside peripheral edge of a neodymium iron boron. It also could be done with a samarium cobalt or a strong ferrite. Neodymium iron boron in 50 gauss, 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch. Now let's look at the same seeds from the same pack, blah, 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 blah. Same exposure on the south pole. The jar is kind of heated it up due to the lamp so I've got uh, a little fogging on the jar there but I think you can see it. I have those seeds. Now this is only 25 hours now. It's going to get drastic at about the three day mark. And uh, right at the end there's three spurts on seed only exposure on sesame seed. I mean on the on uh, these particular seeds, not sesame seeds. <laughs> Talking about sprout seeds here. I don't want to say sesame seeds there for a second. They look like sesame seeds or sprouts. And if I were to give it, now the, now the North Pole exposure was about 5%, but I don't know, since it's murky in here because of the lights, you can't see it that well. I don't want to open up the top, but I think you can to a certain degree. If I were to actually give it a percentage, it is roughly about 65 to 70%. Uh, the seeds have broken through their hulls and they're starting to, you know, starting to, the sprouts are sprouting.
So we're talking a spread difference here. If I were to say 70%, it's actually higher. It actually looks more like 75 or 80%. So we have essentially between the North Pole and the South Pole seeds here. Now this is just magnetic exposure only for four hours. Seed only exposure. We got 5% sprouting, germinating on the North Pole. And on the South Pole there, a rough estimate, 75 to 80%. So we're talking 5% and 80% here. Wow. Wow. Here they are. They're just sprouting alfalfa. Okay. Organic. All came from the same package. Doesn't matter who you buy them from. Doesn't matter what your source is. You could grow beans, carrots, tomatoes. Don't give a frig what it is. But my discovery as to the magnetodielectric rarefaction, and technically this is relational, I mean, it has to do with the geomagnetic precession of uh, the polarity of magnetism, but it's also directly related to uh, electromagnetic retardation, uh, which re general relativity got completely wrong. You can actually read about it in the book by Professor, two doctorate degrees, Dr. Olaf D. Jefferminko. He didn't make, discover this, he talks about uh, electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic retardation. I'm the uh, first person to discover how uh, a magnet works and what magnetism is. It is a reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. Uh, all of these discoveries are copyright of the book, uh, my book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, for 2014, uh, Ken L. Wheeler. Uh, someone was asking me today, I've already made several videos about it, but wanted to go over it really quick, and he was talking about, well, what is polarity? And uh, everything we know about magnetism, of course, uh, dates all the way back to the ancient Greeks and earlier. I don't know actually how much you know about magnetism, whether it's a lot or a little. I mean, we all think of magnetic attraction and magnetic repulsion, but of course there is no such thing as magnetic attraction or magnetic repulsion. It is dielectric voidance and countervoidance. Here we have a neodymium iron boron one inch by one inch cube. A magnet does not have poles at all. Anybody that actually knows much about magnets will tell you one thing, that there is no such thing as a North Pole and a South Pole and a magnet. Well, what does that mean? That means if I had a slicer, and of course this thing is ceramic, you can't really cut it like a piece of bologna, but if I had a slicer and I was able to make a million thin slices of this magnet, every thin slice will have a North Pole and a South Pole. What does that mean? That means this part right here, which is incorrectly called the block wall, which is a description, not an explanation, is the dielectric inertial plane. It is the plane of inertia. We're talking about IA here, inertia and acceleration. Everything over here is force in motion. Phase shift. Now, when you talk about magnetic attraction, magnetic repulsion, there is no such thing. We think of gravity as something separate, but gravity doesn't exist. But if you tell that to someone superficially, they will obviously look at you, you know, like you're walking around naked in a speedo or something. What do you mean gravity doesn't exist, you know? Fall out of an airplane. I mean, didn't you, aren't you the guy that fell out of an airplane thousands of times? Gravity, of course, does exist. It will kill you. But what gravity, what is gravity? Gravity is merely a description of mass with mutual attraction, but that is dielectric voidance. There is no force or motion involved in gravity. It's the same thing with uh, so-called quote-unquote magnetic attraction. They say, well, unlike poles attract, well, it has nothing to do with attraction. Magnetism is the dielectric field. It is dielectric voidance. It is the removal, the erasure of space. We talk about mutual attraction of inverse polarity. We are talking about phase shift cancellation, the erasure of space and time, and it's electromagnetic retardation, and it's the reason for the phase shift. But what people don't understand is you actually have to combine several things to understand what magnetism is. First, you have to know what a hyperboloid is. I can't explain it here in more than a few minutes, but this is a hyperboloid. You have to know what a hypertrochoid is. You have to know what reciprocation is. A magnet is a coherent field of a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. We all know what, at least most of you do, we talk about the, the Earth's axis. Here's the Earth. It sits on this axis, but every, what is it, 23,000 years it processes back and forth. This is also known in magnetism. You have to actually know these frequencies to design uh, magnetic resonance imaging. It's called the Lamour frequency. 
Lamour frequency is the frequency of precession of a magnetic, they call it a magnetic moment, that doesn't mean anything. It is necessitated geomagnetic precession. So you have a, high, hyper, a, hyperbol, uh, excuse me, a hyperboloid that is processing, it is projective geometry. There are only two principles in the universe. The universe is divinely simplex because Mother Nature is not an insane cross-eyed crack whore as general relativity would like you to believe. There's only two principles in the universe, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Both of these are but one thing only, i.e. the ether, force and motion, magnetism. Two principles in the universe, that is it. Mother Nature does not do math. Okay? Understanding field mechanics is not simple, but it is simplex. It is extremely complicated, but it is also simplex at the same time. You only have one field and four field modalities. Over here you have magnetism, over here you have dielectricity, electricity, phi times psi equals Q, Planck, and electrification. Down here what you think is gravity is merely the mutual attraction acceleration of mass towards each other. Two masses right here. Gravity is nothing other than dielectric voidance. That is no different than the extremely strong what you incorrectly and goes all the way back to the ancient Greeks and Babylonia referred to in lodestones when they're actually observing lodestones what you incorrectly call and what we still incorrectly call magnetic attraction does not exist magnetism is a force and motion divergence dielectricity i.e. the dielectric inertial plane you see this magnet right here okay there is no polarity cut this magnet a million times and each little slice will have a north pole and a south pole it is a necessitated field pressure mediation it must net bust be by necessity a pressure mediation between dielectricity and magnetism force and motion inertia and acceleration is no different than what a plumber understands about water going downhill except we're talking about field pressure mediation the extrapolation of same. So what does a magnet have? Does it have poles? Your south pole, here's the north pole? No, because every single slice, if you cut it, what happens? The center moves to the center of every slice. Therefore, if a magnet doesn't have poles, what is a magnet? Right here, the dielectric inertial plane Polarity, you have to define polarity, not descriptions, but true explanation. Polarity is the inverse of this, counter space, i.e. inertia. The opposite of this, on either pole, force and motion. Okay, this is how Mother Nature draws a line. This is how we draw a line. That's not how Mother Nature draws a line. This is Mother Nature's line. This is the only way Mother Nature knows how to draw a line. The inverse of counter space. Over here we have the creation of space. There's no such things as fields in space. Space is a posterior attribute to the creation of force and motion. Okay? Keep trying to reify space as something that does something. Tesla called this idiocy. Space is neither a field nor a force. It acts on nothing and it does nothing. So ultimately in, de in uh, actual denotation and explanation, a magnet does not have poles. Never did, never was, because it is inseparable. You can't cut out a north pole. Well, I'm going to cut the magnet right in the middle. Doesn't matter. You cut the magnet right in the middle, guess what happens? This now becomes the middle over here. The middle of that magnet is counter space. Okay, everything over here is force and motion. It is that simple. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction or repulsion. We're going to continue on with the seed experiments. I'm going to give you a near daily updates and you're going to see what I was talking about. Replicate this yourself. I don't give a damn if you believe me or not. Anybody, everybody can replicate this. It works. Period.